Good morning from the 10 a.m. series, uh, Corona time from St. Agnes. Today, visiting who is welcoming us here already with his vases, uh, ceramic sculptures. Uh, I have no Wi Fi, I see. In the courtyard of St. Agnes, he will show us his studio and um, take us around his house. It's like he also, as well as me, we live and work at the same place. I better get inside. So we're gonna hear more about this. It's a beautiful day and perfect, perfect circumstances for the studio visit with Anselm because he, um, he, lives near the water and so let me let me first find find Anselm this is a work of his in our viewing room right now a new series here we go Into oh and I'm gonna switch off the comments I guess Hello, Anselm. Good morning. Morning. How are you doing? This worked well now after our yeah, I small think so. test yesterday. It was good to, to, to do the test yesterday. Yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah, it's so, a good day today, I would say. Very nice day. Perfect, perfect day for, for visiting you. Yeah. Ah, I see my painting on your wall. Exactly. I was just showing, but the internet connection in my courtyard is not so good. Uh, I was just uh, showing it, um, the the vases you, uh, let me quickly put the tag here, I, I am serious, I forgot to do it before and copy paste it. So now, oh, and then I have to fix it. I'm also getting, each time I'm getting better on this whole. Um, so now it's comment fixed it. Okay, here we are. So, Anselm, um, maybe we start from where you are and you show us, um, you are in Berlin since 20 um, years? Yeah, since uh, more than 20 years. I'm in Berlin since uh, 1997. I moved there when I, after my study in Karlsruhe and I started a studio collaboration with um, other artists uh, in this time, um, like Michel Mayerus, Jon Bock, Bertha Fischer and Dieter Detzner. And um, we started uh, to have a studio together with, uh, in, in Kreuzberg. And uh, there I had my studio tw for 20 years. And um, 2008, I moved here to Treptow. I um, bought a um, piece of land here and um, it was used to be part of the water police and um, I met my wife in this time and she is an architect and then step by step we started to renovate uh, the buildings here from the water police and uh, three years ago she built the house where I am now so this is near the water and uh, near the spray. I, maybe mm -hmm. I switch the camera please Oh, yeah, here you see the artwork Very of nice. uh, artists I really admire. It's um, Peter Halley. Um, I switched some works, for example, here with Peter or with um, Vans. Um, I did a co um, collaboration with him. Also, uh, we switched the work or some works. And um, so this I installed here. And this, here you see the house on the river. So it's a uh, spray in Berlin. Beautiful, beautiful. And, wow, uh, and you and 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 Tanya Linke is the name of your wife. She's the architect. Yeah. Wow, yeah. And she and she built the house in a way that it's almost like an infinity. Like you, you as you look when you can you go back, you look right into the water, right? Yes, yes. So she, uh, for her, it was really important that uh, we built it directly on the water. Here you see the old, I don't know how you call them, piers. Uh, piers, yeah. Yeah, of the of the water police, and there's a small boat's house. We can look at it later in the garden, mm -hmm. and um, so it feels like the water is flowing under our house. Mm -hmm. um, it's built on pillars, 
So everything is quite flat here in, in uh, Berlin and outside of Berlin. So I like the idea that we have a, um, a higher point of view. So here you see a bridge, which is maybe, I'm not sure if you see it. Uh, they built it three years ago. So the whole district here is developing more and more. When I bought it, um, I thought I can just work here and then later uh, we saw that in the evenings we don't want go, uh, to go back to the city. We really want to stay here and then we got the idea to build the house here for living. So. And what we see here, which I hope we, we get to, is um, um, almost like an installation you created um, of the or, co or configuration you did of the former industrial buildings um, and you put together the concrete almost like a Caspar David Friedrich you, yeah, you, you that's push what you see here yeah yeah, yeah. You... I did some of them <laughs> so this used to be the main hall of the water police and this was um, uh, the main station of the water police of the GDR um, and when uh, the wall was falling um, they didn't have to do so much anymore, I think. Uh, they, they, <laughs> I'm sure they, they um, have to do, but maybe because they didn't have to protect the border, which was maybe their main job or one mm. of the main jobs. And that's why uh, more than half of the property was then empty. Um, and uh, 2008, um, they sold it so I could buy it. And this was really the, the main hall where, where they had their boats. Even the boat of Erich Honecker was here. Um, and uh, but it was very rotten. It still had had a roof, but it was so rotten that we couldn't renovate it. And first we wanted to break it down, everything. But then I got the idea to shape an, a ruin out of it. Yeah. And uh, uh, so this means that the wall border, I mean the, the also the death line, was right at the house, right? The spree, this part of the spree was the wall. I think it was a bit more up the river. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, when you go up the river, you come to Kreuzberg, and uh, there was the border. So part oh, okay. of the river was border, and part, partly it was. So here we are really in the east. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can have a look at the, the, the chairs, because you, I think in collaboration with Dior a couple of years ago, you did these, yes. you, you did these chairs, mm -hmm. which, because, yeah, because I think very interesting for people to see is how we see that with Franz West, who you, as you said, did a collaboration with, but also Peter Helly, who I yeah. think is a, um, yeah, a, a artist who inspires you. But your work, somehow, um, you work and live like hand in hand. And also, we, we're gonna, if we move forward, right, there's this shelf you did. Or maybe yeah, a, one quick chef. look at the, at the, at yeah. the chair. So it's a camouflage. So, so chairs were part of the collaboration I did with Dior. So I did, um, when was that? 2011, I think. Uh, I did like 60 products for Dior. The idea first was just to do a pattern for a bag, and then it developed up to two patterns and uh, 60 different products. And the chairs were made for the pop-up store. Um, the first was in Miami and uh, some pop-up stores in Paris and, and over the world. And um, so later I thought, why not using them? For, for our house, or that was before I built the house, I think. Um, but when we built it, I thought, oh, I have some chairs, maybe they fit here. So it is the Super same nice. fabrics like like the bags. It's very resistant. So everything mm -hmm. the door does is very resistant, I think. So, and when we built the house, I saw that I made a lot of furniture uh, in my career, like uh, I did sofas. <laughs> yeah. So, for example, this one is an example. Um, um, I bought cheap sofas, trashy design in the internet. So good. On eBay. So this uh, used to be, I don't know who made it, if it was a single piece or not, but it was really a <laughs> very special piece. Um, it, it was black and white uh, artificial leather from the <laughs> 80s. <laughs> and I thought I'd take this typical ugly sofa color, <laughs> this <laughs> mustard yellow, <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, I, and, I, and the lilac together, fabrics on. 
But can we look at the carpet? I think my, eventually people missed it because you did this amazing carpet based on your, which I also, I mean, what I like so much about your work that you have this kind of like um, referential humor to your own practice. A little bit down, the, the, the silver foil carpet. Ah, the carpet, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The carpet uh, I did together with a company called Hensel. Um, for example, the, the, the pillows I made, they're also from Hensel. But the carpet is really, uh, it's a detail from a foil painting, uh, from a foil piece. And uh, it is really, um, how you say, geknüpft. It's a mix of um, wool and, and silk. Yeah, so it is really a very great craft, craft piece, uh, what, what they made here. We should so, put that up actually in our, in our online shop. Also, the, yeah. because we sell the pillow at the, the gallery here, but yeah, I don't yeah. think we have it online. Yeah, yeah. Those, and I have to show this uh, funny detail uh, of the sofa because when you sit, you can really do this, yeah? Yeah. Feet. And this, uh, I can't do it now, but you can lift them up. And here is a table. Yeah. Uh, one moment, please. Uh, so you. <laughs> oh, the furnier, <laughs> there's furnier on it. Wow, nice. <laughs> and I think the car who designed it originally, uh, the guy who designed it originally, he was a car fan because these are wheels. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. And this is like in the Mercedes, the middle part, like in the old Mercedes. Too, too bad we can't see your private jet on this session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have one, but <laughs> I have an idea for it. And um, yeah, here's the shelf. Um, I go back a little bit. Um, and in this shelf, the idea was, um, because my wife, she built all the furniture like uh, cardboards and, and this shelf and, uh, for, for the flat. And the idea was um, my, my grandmother, she had a thing called a Setzkasten. Do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine, mine as well. System, my yeah? grandmother as well. Is it a German thing maybe? Where you had these small oh. elements to put in the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, and where, when she traveled somewhere, she brought something, <clears throat> things for tourists and so. And the idea was to do something like the sets custom, um, but uh, for art pieces. So it's a mix of uh, different art pieces. Um, for example, here from Thilo Heinzmann, um, here's Stephen Perino, um, here are pieces from the, like, uh, Göpfert is here. Yeah. Uh, from the from the zero art uh, movement, uh, for example, and and oh, this is Don van Fleet, the guy who uh, is well known as a musician, Captain Beefheart. I really admire him. Yeah. And uh, for example, this is just drum drum pad, which I bought on a last last concert of Motorhead. So, so it's a mix of um, art and uh, some other things. For example, this is just a test of. Uh, our varnisher, who just wanted to show us <laughs> different kinds of varnish, and he made this extra abstract piece. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah. And it's just a mix of different things. So this is, I bought um, at Takashi's gallery, Ta uh, Takashi Murakami yeah. gallery, Kai Kai Kiki gallery, and she shows young um, <clears throat> um, Japanese artists. It's a ceramic. And uh, for example, this is Otto Freundlich, a uh, very important artist for me. It's an abstract artist of the modernist period, a Swiss artist. Um, you did a group of works uh, uh, honoring him, right? Yes. Yeah. And he developed this uh, kind of uh, abstract cubism, um, uh, which is very important for my work. I discovered uh, his work when I was a kid. Um, what I find interesting yeah, is that how, how you play with these elements of, because the, the shelf is made with furnier and, and uh, it's, it's, I, I guess that applies also to other cultures, but it, it is kind of an element which used, which kind of represents the Schrankwand, the, you know, the furniered uh, part, uh, I don't know, a certain chapter of uh, German his, uh, Bundesrepublikan uh, history. Yes, and exactly. how you how you use elements of kitsch and um, uh, like how 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 you uh, juxtapose uh, different trends 
um, uh, which are, I don't know would considered to as denial or, or, or um, uh, react anti reactions or uh, create anti reactions or something that you yes, that you yes. kind of like mix them. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is really a main part of of my work and how you described it is totally right. For example, like this oasis of the 70s, which uh, you find everywhere in thrift stores and uh, flea markets. And I was very fascinated by those kind of uh, colors and surfaces, how they used it in the 70s. And um, so I researched how they did it and made, they basically made them in, in a huge size, very sculptural. Like the one we have here in the yeah. in the in the garden, yeah, in the courtyard. In the in the seventies, it was. Um, I go a bit closer. It was. Um, this is a piece I made, but I researched how they did this kind of glazure, the surfaces in uh, how they burned it, and to have this very strong colors. And they are, later they were called fat lava because of this surface, mm -hmm. this lava surface, mm -hmm. uh, which I later learned happened as an accident. Um, they burned it too hot, and then it cooked like lava. And um, so in the period of the, I would say, 60s, 70s, and early 80s, they produced them, but it was maybe just 15 years. And they were made industrial in a very big production. And, Cheap, uh, big numbers, right? Very effective. Numbers. Everyone had this in, in his houses, and it's very strange psychedelic colors of yeah. the 70s. And then it totally disappeared. And it was very um, hard for me to find someone who firstly could do the really big um, sizes. I wanted to have six cultural sizes like a uh, human size. And when I found someone who could do it, he really hated my idea of, <laughs> <laughs> of transforming this cheap 70s industrial production in a manual sculptural piece because all the serious ceramic guys, they hate this kind of ceramic. So yeah. This, Vasarely, one of the first pieces, but a ceramic version of it. It was the first op art piece in the art history. Mel Ramos and uh, the Katja Strunz, which I also have here on the wall. And uh, Uwe Henneken. Yeah, I really, yeah, even really I quickly like... want to. I quickly want to give a look out to the. Yeah. Yes. I mean, now we looked, but, I am. but there, the, you see our. And and but you you mainly present the big one. Uh, sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, the connection is interrupted, Johan. Um, yeah, but uh, meanwhile I can show here. No, uh, no, I have a... uh, I, I'm back. So, oh, okay. uh, but you 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 mainly show the big sculptures in the in the in 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 in. in in the art context, you don't really, you don't really, um, the, the small one is more like, was it more like a test? Or was it an yeah, actual work? One, um, well, this was just a test. So um, that's why it fits, fits very, very well here on the shelf. So and and did small ones that I showed, but this one was just a test. This and is, did it lead to, different. did they kind of lead to these ones? Or is it, is it not so connected to yeah. these paint? Ah, yeah, maybe, maybe it uh, does because um, the kind of surface and the clash of colors and uh, also yeah. material, I think, really is connected. But maybe it was maybe uh, more the other way because um, my newer paintings are based on uh, paintings I did 20 years ago when I started, when I ended art school. Um, I started this kind of gestural painting and... Um, <clears throat> Um, it was kind of a maybe ironic hint on gestural painting on one hand. On the other hand, I saw when I do it, um, I want to do it good. <laughs> yeah. and, um, one is better than the other. And then the thing which, which was firstly maybe more an ironic comment or meant as an ironic comment started to get somehow serious, but without losing its doubt to this genius gesture itself. So I think this is a bit my roots in, in abstract painting, what I described at the moment. And what, what, and what I, yeah, sorry. Please. Now what I find so, so, so strong in these, in these works are that they are, I mean, they are kind of simple because they only have these two color elements and they are 
pleasingly, visually pleasing and on a certain way decorative, but also kind of painful, you know, because they have these irritating colors and then, and then, and then there's this orange, it's sprayed, right? Sorry, it's the, 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 the background the back is, uh, is sprayed. Is sprayed. And, and yeah. this, I mean, when you look at this, it's, 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 a, you can't, it's re not really clear. Is it paint or is it like some toxic, um, yeah. paste? How, how, how do you do this? How do you put it on, on, uh, uh, how do you apply it? Um, yeah, it's a paste, which I mix in exactly the color, which normally is white or transparent. It's a gel in this case. And I mix it uh, in the exactly the color I want to have. And this is this maybe very artificial uh, toxic green, um, which is maybe a very, again, a very big distance to, to the surface, which is uh, black and um, neon orange. And the surface is spray painted, which makes it kind of nearly virtual or um, very spatial. And then we have this very um, brutal um, material on top of it. And um, so that's, I think, what I, I work with, with this very disharmonic uh, colors and materials. And in the end, so for firstly, and that, that's what I, when I started this gestural painting, I tried to use colors that don't fit at all, that you really wouldn't take, yeah? And then mm -hmm. I did my, my um, vocabulary of, of colors and uh, materials, which, and for example, a paint, I, a color I really hate, uh, hated a lot was uh, mauve, this kind of uh, light purple. Yeah. And this now is one of my main, became one of my main colors. So, so it changed. Is this the one way I have one, the silver foil in this uh, uh, evil yellow? Is it this color? Yeah, this evil yellow and uh, mauve. <laughs> As Can this, I see move? Uh, Which of move? Purple. Move is uh, this here. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, mm. And but tell me, are these complementary? Are these complementary colors here? No. Um, uh, uh, kind of, but uh, it's not. Uh, normally, blue is the comp complementary uh, to orange. To, to orange. Okay. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking for this not directly complementary colors, but this uh, strange kind of dissonance which has a new kind of, uh, let's say, spirit or sound or, yeah. So it is very, I, I just walked around the shelf now and from the other side, it's this uh, bibliotheque. So the shelf um, divides the space here and yeah. from the side it's, it's uh, for books. And then here again are furnitures. This I made again. The carpet I made as well, it's a woven, hand woven carpet of my Also based on a painting? Yeah, it is I yeah, I would say um different kind of materials like the foil and so yeah. and uh, also there's a wire which you can uh load with a battery and <laughs> it's shining. It's so different kind of wires and pieces. I wanted to do a car a wall carpet, but then I didn't like it on the wall. So we took it for our house and the table is Armand. It's yeah. um, an artist I really admire. I admire his energy, and he made it for his friend Yves Klein in the Yves Klein colors. Yeah, the original table, the first, uh, was made by Yves Klein. Yeah, I so have one. He made yeah. one in blue, yeah. orange, and red, I think, right? Um, no, in the typical Yves Klein colors, blue, gold, and pink. Pink, I mean, exactly red. pink, not red, yeah, red. yeah. But you know, you should do one of those. Yeah. <laughs> you should like, like line up in that, in that, in that. Uh, but maybe yeah. we can see the hay bar on the yeah, other I, side. I think we yeah. missed that. I have, yeah, maybe if you like, I can go to, um, through the garden to the studio. Yeah, can we look at I your, have... quickly of the, oh. hay, of the, of the, of your, of your kind of, because, because it's often interesting that, that artists use their own work more casual. I mean, on the, uh, isn't it move, isn't that there anymore? You know, the box, the plexiglass box with the hay inside? Yeah, I have it here next oh, to Oh, it's moved. Okay, because uh, it used to be. But uh, this you... is a piece I swapped with an artist I really like, Jim Lambie. So, do you know the doors of Jim Lambie? Of, of course. With Great mural. color, too. Yeah. So, he made it. 
uh, we, we swapped it. And this is the piano. And from my wife. Oh, there it is. Okay, then it moved. It was, you know, it was. We have one, so I have it in different colors. Also just transparent and inside is just a um, straw bale. Um, painted in silver. And yeah, here more sculptural, but you can also use it as a table. So this mix of, um, is it high art or is it furniture? So I think it goes through my whole um, artwork. For can example, we look? Can we look at the at the at the guerrilla guards? Uh, this. <laughs> this is also very interesting. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So, you would say Richard Prince. I really admire him, but I could get it cheaper than from <laughs> the Prince. <laughs> so, and um, the suicide girls. He took the. the oh, suicide, not guerrilla yeah. girls. That's a big, <laughs> big, big difference. <laughs> 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 That's right. <yeah. laughs> so not not guerrilla girls. This one, and so um, they were because he took their Instagram profiles, and they were, I think, very astonished why it costs uh, nearly one hundred thousand dollars. So they said, okay, we can make it cheaper. So they sold it for ninety nine dollars, and uh, I could get one, or I get could get two. <laughs> And uh, but I really like this work. It's very radical, I think, in terms of what can <clears throat> painting be today. So. Yeah, but it's also interesting in the way how you work with uh, a certain sense of appropriation, and you yeah. you, you you like, uh, for example, um, uh, what we showed here at the at the church. Um, you did this giant mobiles of um, yeah. I have a picture over here. Of um, massively enlarged, um, yeah, what is it? Schwarzwald uh, mobiles, which, which, yeah. So this was this is mm. the big the big space upstairs, and um, and you can find them somehow on on Christmas markets hanging over candles, and then because of the heat they turn, and um, yeah, maybe you want to talk about this a little bit. Yeah, so. I think um, if you look at it from, from the formal aspect, because it was my first show in your gallery, and I think it was something maybe people didn't expect. And I think in terms of the, what you say, the, the, what I'm doing, uh, the content is um, still that I find something which originally dealt or uh, originally came of, of the modernism, I would say, of the period of the modernism. So this one from the 50s, 60s, the kinetic art, the op art, and then it kind of dropped out of the art, of the art, uh, high art context, and people took it uh, for decoration at their homes or garden houses or in their yeah. windows. Yeah? And that's how I found it. I really found it on the Christmas market, and I was, but I was so fascinated by it. So... Then I had the idea, a bit the same kind of thinking when, uh, like I told before with Oasis, I had the idea to build it in, uh, in a very monu monumental, very huge scale and make it really sculptural. Yeah. And, um, and the, here you just see stills, but when it's moving, you have this, this, Beautiful, effect, yeah, yeah. this pop art effect, this kinetic effect, and which is really fascinating. And, um, when you asked me doing a show in your space, I thought it's perfect for this. Yeah, here you see also the shadow. Yeah, but actually I just realized we need to make photos uh, with people on it because you don't really get the scale, yeah? Because this is like, yeah. this is 50 meters high and this whole thing spans, what is yeah. it, four meters or what? More. Uh, it's more, it's uh, seven meters. Seven meters. And, and now it's installed at uh, Estrell. Yes, and yes. Uh, I have a good story to tell you. Uh, maybe I'm going to do this while you want to go to the garden? Oh. Yes, I go. Up, uh, maybe it, it might be un interrupted three yeah, seconds. Exactly, because, because I have a I pretty the, hilarious... The of, ...of our house. Oh, nice. And we made it of the... We had to cut two trees, and we made, for example, the staircase or our table here, which I shortly show here, off, and also the, the beds for in the children room and so on. So we tried to use this wood... Um, uh, for what we cut the trees um, for the furnitures here that my wife built. And the staircase is nearly like a ready-made, 
So the company who did the concrete of our house, they built it like this. It's just practical. And I thought it's a great shape, yeah? um, which originally was just practical that you don't fall down. For construction site yes. reasons, they built and, it. And we took exactly this shape with this turned uh, pillars here. Yeah, in yeah. Steel. And, but build it of our wood. So oh, can you look quickly to the right? Because I think that's kind of an interesting detail. Tanja uh, is, is from East Germany. And yeah. I, I at least hear a bit more because you I see these, yeah. these, 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 you know, you, 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 it's a new building, but it kind of uses almost like elements from uh, a certain 60s yeah. brutalist yeah. vibe, no? This uh, glass yeah. bricks um, are a detail we found on our neighbor's house from the water police. And um, yeah, I think you saw a lot of them in 50s, 60s. We really like it because the light shines through. So for example, now it's light on in the bathroom. Yeah. I opened the door because the kids were in it before. <laughs> Not clean up. Um, but there's light inside. And uh, if you're inside, the light from outside comes through. So it's a very nice uh, material. Yeah. And here, I, I, I'm not sure if the connection holds, but here we have the other side of the house. Um, Again with Fournier. What's the English yeah. name for Fournier? Fournier? Mm, I, I always say Fournier, yeah. yeah. So, um, and there's a big cupboard where we have all our stuff inside, and then there are two uh, doors. You can close them also. And yeah, so here's. Actually, we did an amazing piece in our König magazine on the house. Here you see, here you see the house from the outside. Yeah. And uh, here you see what he described the um, um, the former uh, the former hall of the water police, and we were very proud to get. Margaret Meyer, who was a former uh, editor-in-chief of ARD, uh, Architecture Digest magazine. Here you see one of the vases being shipped to, uh, to the gallery. Here you see inside the studio. We're going to see this. Uh, that's a house freestanding on the water. And, and only this is a staircase in here. Tanya is really amazing architect. Um, and, and, but what I wanted to tell you is about this piece here. So... There was an article in the newspaper that we had sold this to a, uh, I don't know, a reasonable sum. And then we got a letter from a very prominent Berlin lawyer saying that he represents a client who uh, Anselm violated his copyright and um, that he wants to settle an agreement. Uh, otherwise, they would sue us. And then I thought, like, I mean, give me a break. <laughs> Google uh mobile um uh, uh, how 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 answer what do you think how would you google to get the hit hit the most results um uh, windspiel 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 exactly <laughs> google windspiel like a uh, 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 wind game and uh, because it's interesting because who should be the copyright owner of this i mean of course uh, alexander calder i think he invented the mobile um but i mean in inventing the idea of a mobile it's not a um uh, so it was a really interesting case, um, of course, uh, nothing came out of it, but it was a very interesting case um, uh, of this. Unfortunately, this thing didn't hit the, hit the news because I think it would have been an interesting discussion about ownership and, um, and, and, and where appropriation starts or so. So, yeah, but now, um, now we are on the, tell us. Yeah, now we're on the property, so I enter now the main hall of the water police. Um, so we see the garden through this old gate. Uh, here you see my wife, Luisa. And so... <laughs> Hello. And here's the photo. <laughs> my son. He shows you something. <laughs> yeah, and uh, here you can look through this big old gate and see the river. We can open this door to the water and we can also swim here when it's warm enough. And 
I mean, we really must say that both of us are so privileged in the way we are in isolation. Huh? I mean, I imagine. Say, yeah, 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 yeah. That's true because here we nearly can't. Um, we we nearly can't um, feel that, you know, because we have uh, so much outside space. The only thing is that uh, the friends of the kids can't come at the moment. Yeah. But um, we have so much space. That's really true. Here you, you see our first guest house, <laughs> the caravan. Yeah. So now, GDR caravan, no? Yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a, yeah. They build it later, but in in the style how they build it in the GDR. So it's a GDR replica caravan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not even the real one. And we went to vacation with it, so it was a bit tiny. I took a tent later, but. <laughs> 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 but the yeah. but the kids love it, right? They love um, they love yeah, camping. Yeah. They they for them it was the best um, holiday we ever. Here, let me let me walk over to this because you started this body of work uh, when you <laughs> because also this like cliche of the artist uh, living at the water, starting uh, watercolors. Here we ah, have yeah. one here. Ah yeah, I can show you where. I... <laughs> Yeah, oh, this is like a, this is almost like a signature piece of you, right? It's it's like a, it's like um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, as if <laughs> the red wine glass left on the paper. In this case, because I did the watercolors, I made it in red wine. Yes, <laughs> uh, I developed it when I made my first dry pieces. So when I made them, I it really happened that uh, paint dripped out, and then I thought, oh, it kind of looks good. So then I started to to work with this mistake and then I um, made it better and better I would say and then in the end it was kind of my uh, brand it became my brand the drips and this um, edge of the of a, of a bucket or in that case of a glass yeah and the idea was um, because when I made a braid uh, break in terms of exhibition uh, I was really I I had to think, rethink how how I will go on, because um, <clears throat> I was over the years working more and more uh, on my typical pieces because they were demanded and I had to do them and uh, I had to develop them, uh, which was good. But on the other hand, it was very conceptual, and um, I thought my roots are more spontaneous and there are more um, they 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 kind of. My, my work kind of changed in a way which I not 100% know if I want to go on this way. It was getting more and more perfect with my studio team. And I was losing this very spontaneous, strange and uh, way of doing art, what you call <laughs> originally creative. You have an idea and you just do it. So I mm -hmm. wanted to come back to this. And then and when I did my break, I really didn't know if I maybe become a watercolor artist now or yeah but it's interesting it, it's interesting because these are watercolors you did this is like yeah. also this like in this case it's uh, red wine because it's the artist uh, standing on the waterfront um you know uh, watercoloring but also here the gesture and the artist hand the presence of the artist is way more uh, yeah. visible and actually yeah. i guess also what you did here in the big show with us upstairs um, you, of course, you did not fabricate this yourself, but then you took this uh, Seitenschleifer yeah, and did, yeah. um, did all these, yeah. you know, before it's interesting it's that you, you kind stuff. of moved. We talked earlier on other episodes, so to speak, of this show about minimalism and that minimalism uh, started to uh, to avoid the, physic the visible hand of the artist. And, and, and you had that practice for quite a while because you were doing almost had like a factory right of people executing for you and now it's more you are back more on your yes yes is your own presence more visible yeah. because what i described before i i think basically it was through the collaboration with franz west and the idea came up when i came to franz studio i saw that he works in a very um similar style style or way that, that how i am working he works with a team he does a lot and then he throws the you, you, you know what he said to me once I was visiting, you know, he, he, he was very close um, with my father and we, and also my mother is from Vienna and they were t close friends. And we went visiting Franz West when I was a child. And he said to me, you know, because I said, what is this? What are you doing here? And he said, yeah, you know, I'm Ikea for rich people. 
<laughs> because he was like shooting at all these sofas, you know. Yeah, yeah. And lamps. Yeah. yeah. He, yeah, yeah. So in, I think it was the 90s when he said he, he became like a furniture builder because uh, yeah. of the art <laughs> exactly. market and so on. Yeah. And then he had this uh, furniture thing for the documenta <laughs> together with... Uh, oh, I, I have to show... I, I, at the end, I have to show you. I have, I have the prototype. I have the first sofa. I don't know if, you, if, I've, if you've seen it. I have the yeah. first sofa he ever did. But anyway, let's back yeah. to your... Here you see what... The assistants did this great structure, which I never could do. <laughs> so I really like when I go to a color sh shop or like a Künstler Bedarf, like Bösner or so, I really love the shelves and I always wanted to have it like wow. this. <laughs> but I wouldn't be, uh, I could do it. I'm not this person who can do that. But this is one thing which is good to work with other people who can do it. But on the other way, I saw uh, it was getting more and more perfect. And through the collaboration with Franz, I saw what I missed or begin to miss in my own work, this very spontaneous gestural things. And um, so I used this break to come back to it. One way to come back to this was the ceramics, which I still develop. For example, this is a new piece of ceramics. Mm -hmm. A bit like the one we have in Tokyo in the show, right? Yes, yes. This is yeah. a bigger one here. And uh, when you look at the surface, it's very gestural. And I worked with these uh, holes, which I learned from the Asian ceramics, from the traditional Japanese ceramics, they, that some uh, artists accepted those. And that, then it's not a vase anymore, but it's, um, it's a sculpture. Mm -hmm. And I was very fascinated by that. <clears throat> and you, in the ceramics, with the, here... Um, it's like we, is, right? It's like, uh, it's like our own... Um, issues and yeah. disadvantages that shape our personality or so. Huh? Absolutely. And this is, uh, has a um, <clears throat> platin uh, glazure, so it's uh, platin. But uh, the ones I did before were more colorful and then you never know what comes out of the oven. And sometimes the mm -hmm. shape changes mm -hmm. or the surface are changing mm -hmm. and the, the colors be starting to run. Uh, like the dripping paintings and so so, so, so you leave like the aesthetic uh, finalization to the open to the un uncertain you, do, yes, you don't yes, you, 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 yes. you let go of control yeah yeah and that's that's both was for me a very important thing to come back to this thing and I think this really changed not to give the process of <clears throat> of doing it too much to the assistant so I still like to work with assistants I like the way of communication and I don't have to do everything myself it would take some things would take too long because what mm -hmm. looks very spontaneous sometimes here or so is also well prepared the surface has to be prepared for a foil like this example. but it's interesting because you you have worked with neon in the past so you you were using uh, found neon from former neon um elements is installations but then also you did foil paintings where you combined neons and now the neon comes back on the canvas yes yes uh, i i did um paintings with uh neon before i i'm doing them since 10 years but that were just foil paintings and um it is good to to work in this with with neon because you have all this mix of color you have the neon itself and you have the re reflection in the foil mm -hmm. so i worked with it before but um Later, I started to to really use it as a formal part, as like a like a drawing in my abstract paintings. So this is mm. what I'm. For doing. for those for those who missed it, I did a walkthrough with our uh, Tatsuya Yamazaki um, uh, gallery director in our Konik Tokyo space, where Anzem has a solo show up right now. And there's a beautiful piece where there's a painting, and then out of the painting comes a neon on on one of these. Um, how do you call it? Uh, table top? No, table uh, f uh, stool foot. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, yeah. You you mean the A-frames? Uh, ah, the A-frames. A-frames, exactly. Yeah. 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 I Which think. I really think that you should uh, because how do they? You they, they are they be, they become. Yeah. Th this I, this is just from the working in the studio. They they look yeah, this way. That's where I'm working because uh, of the quarantine at the moment myself. Which is not 
it is uh, good to, I have really time to have an empty studio now. And um, when I really think we should do, do an edition out of these. I think there's such great sculptural artworks people could, could easily live with in their house. And it, because there are quite some of them, it could be like on the good bridge of, you know, for people who can't really afford the paintings. Yeah, <laughs> that's good idea. I mean, I would love to have one. I, I would love to. Yeah. Oh, wow. So this for is how, all for what, how many years work. have you worked? Uh, as, 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 what's the time span of the creation of those? Maybe I, I don't throw them away, you know. Uh, sometimes they get repaired. Uh, so maybe the last, I would say, 20 years <laughs> um, are here. So the paint of the last 20 years. And for example, when they, when they break, when this kind of thing breaks, we uh, repair it with this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it can also be part of um, beautiful element of it. And, and some of them have pink, like extreme, more extreme colors, camouflage. -y. Yeah, some like, uh, for example, here. Wow. Yellow or you know, orange. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah anyway, I was interrupting you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here are things that are in work. Some um, things are finished, or for example, here are series I'm working on. Can small. you get a bit closer? Yes. I bring something I want to show you. So this, though are, those are in work at the moment. Here again, the different kind of impastos I'm working in and the spray painted background. Mm -hmm. And, are uh, you are you still have a, are you still because uh, you still uh, putting camouflage on the edges sometimes? Yes, I I did, and the one in Tokyo is uh, ah, true. Yes, yeah, uh, it's one I I had from some years ago. <laughs> I still had in my storage, and I used it again. So <laughs> with the sides. So it's interesting, you know, for those who who when I opened my gallery in 2002 in Rosa Luxemburg Platz, Anselm had a show. Would say a year later, two years later, and you did this big hay wagon, uh, and you kind of color, you you in a in a, in a neon color you painted uh, um, uh, wheels, you know, like farmer wheels and this hay wagon. And I always thought this is um, it was you were always it was always a desire for me to working with you. So I'm very happy that that it turned so, out. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah. was... Even it took a bit longer, but. Um, <laughs> I really thought that with this, with these simple gestures, you were able to, with a, with coloring the these these found objects, almost like ready-made, shifted. But then also what you did with the silver foil, you know, the simple, the transformation of the element from a, like a cheap material which is used very effectively in window shopping, um, to then create this strong gesture. Uh, I really think it's it's a masterpiece, and and also the stripe works. You you you, you don't work on the on these um, anymore right now. On this series of uh, farmer objects, I started with a wagon wheel. Um, that was um, be at the end of my study time, because I saw um, when I I studied painting, and um, but I always. I really struggled with it somehow with the painting, and I I, I um, saw that I'm more an artist who is more inspired of what I see uh, instead of looking inside myself. You know, I first have to like discover something. Uh, I have to feel a fascination, and so, and um, and then uh, I started uh, the first thing, and then I started to work with things uh, I found. The first thing is I I took. Fish, fish nets that I found somewhere. I really mm, like yes, them, I and I hang them next to my paintings. So, and my professor, he was really shocked. He said, "Oh, it's so kitsch! What do you do? It looks like in a, in a restaurant." And <laughs> then, when, <laughs> oh, like it, Toscana style. <laughs> yeah. So this decoration thing that normally uh, the serious painter tries to avoid, I I saw that I'm interested in it, and then uh, later I took wagon wheels which is also a very typical thing to decorate a house, your house or your garden. But I saw that this shape is very interesting. It's a very archaic shape and it's um, how our civilization began. 
yeah, or technical civilization. And I really saw that I, and I also like this very strong shape of a wagon wheel. And then I started to change them very easily in adding a neon light or painted it neon yellow. And I saw that I'm very interested in this very simple steps to, uh, you have the two elements, you have the wagon wheel and you have the color neon yellow and you add it and then something happens, what, what I think is art, that you can't uh, logically describe. Um, so it's not just components, it's more you're wondering about it. And that's, I think, was a very basic uh, moment for everything I did later on. Yeah, yeah I found <clears throat> this other first issue we did of, uh, of the magazine. Um... This was on Isa Genskin, on Dittmann. Because we did a studio visit with you before. And there, here, this is I wanted to show. So, uh, because I, we don't have one here in the gallery. So here you were building on, this is, the, the, where are these materials coming from? These are leftovers. Um, it's drilled metal from companies that you often see in uh, recycling stations, uh, in uh, containers, in big containers. So it's metal trash. Yeah. And uh, I was very fascinated always by this uh, structure and and the the material itself, the shininess. And then you find it in containers near train stations and so. And I had the idea. Uh, just to put them in these acrylic boxes I work with for the foil pieces, and that's it. Then I yeah. saw I need some bigger things, elements, and so it's a mix of uh, materials I let drill and real leftovers from the recycling space, uh, uh, places. Mm -hmm. And here we have another... Oh, here, here you see the, the elements you, you enlarge and you... Yeah. Here is my in the shelf in my studio where I have all my materials, different materials. This is a model for a bigger sculpture, freestanding sculpture. Also, uh, what we showed at Art Basel. Um, yeah. 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 This, uh, um, different um, yeah models for stainless steel sculptures, but freestanding, not uh, like Art Basel on the wall based, more freestanding. Yeah. This is a thing I did with Meissen. Uh, they asked me if I can do a. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, 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 yeah. These these are leftover yeah. clumps, right? Yeah, Maybe you can tell a bit. It's, uh, they, I saw in Meissen, when I visited the factory, I saw a box with all the leftovers they had, things that really didn't work out. And I saw a still wet clay or porcelain, and I said, let's burn this. I did different uh, things. Some were painted later by their painters with the typical Meissen patterns, like the Zwiebelmuster, the onion pattern. And uh, so I did different things. And later, I showed them in between. But but I have one and it's way more shiny than this one. Yeah, maybe I have to. Because or maybe not, it's the light only. <laughs> yeah, it's not in the vitrine. Uh, ah, that's why. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're beautiful. They all these like leftovers put together and then burned, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and some, you know, for example, here you see the African sculptures I made later. The the chrome sculptures I took yeah. four shapes of them. Here you see a bunch of them. I took four shapes. I realized for doing them in a bigger version in the chrome, a bronze cast and then chrome. Mm. And I think uh, because in my studio I just do the paintings and half of my work is not painting, it is more sculptural. And um, here you see all, I would say, the source for my sculptures um, or ideas of things I might do in the future, maybe. So just projects. And I think what okay. combines... Wait, let's not show too much. Yeah. And my, what combines my, my, my sculptural work is that I use elements that are from the modernist language, but then dropped out somehow and came into craft or what, what people call kitsch. And I asked why and tried to, to bring it back or to confront uh, people with their own. Um, oh, here thing. we see the vases in the, yeah. in the courtyard again. Yeah, Nicely so. installed. Windspiel, how it should hang in the Tate Modern, I think. Exactly. If they are watching, <laughs> um, <laughs> we are ready when you are. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And to them. And, uh, and maybe the... we can have a look at this one to the left, the, the yellow one, because I think that's a very interesting project ah, yeah. where you, where you picked that up from. Um, this one, yeah. 
Yeah, it's so it's like a modern sculpture from the GDR as well, no? Yeah, originally, I, I I found it in Dresden on a interesting uh, space of a former electronic um, company of the GDR, and it's called Robotron. And this was exactly like you see it here, but just in concrete. And now they um, now it's not existing anymore. Then. And, and oh no, they took it down, it's destroyed? And it's so, so weird, they take everything down of the GDR, oh. like the Palace de Republic. And, uh, it's so terrible, so terrible. And build uh, shit there. <laughs> terrible, yeah. Okay, but uh, that's another thing. Um, why, why don't we take some questions? Oh no, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll finish about this one. Yeah, I, I, it's just, uh, in this, I had the idea to, 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 to transform it in this very artificial, nearly, nearly virtual material. And uh, here you see a bigger version. Uh, one in just chrome in this, um, in this surface is now in Doha at the airport, which is a bit the irony of history, I would say. Mm -hmm. and, oh, uh, yeah. Tina Röder told us, uh, Furnier is Venier. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah. Sure. And, then, and then there's a question here. Which were your teachers in Karlsruhe? Uh, it was Helmut Dorner, a very interesting um, artist and professor. He was really a very good professor for me. And uh, we talked the whole day about our works. And I really learned how to, to think about art, how to oh, talk very about nice. Good it. Um, he so, was important yeah, for you also. Dollar. No, here, I mean, the Gunter Ferg is interesting. That's a uh, um, uh, good reference. And then here's a, because I think we have to come to, a, to an end because we're going to be cut okay. off soon because we talked yeah. almost for an hour, but it, well, I could go on and on for <laughs> hours with you. So always interesting. And I'm so happy about this. About this com I mean, we had these conversations before, but I'm so happy about this crisis that I, that I started doing things like this. And that other can sh that you are willing to join and do this and that uh, let uh, let us understand how you think and so work. Fishes in my studio, the fish tank. <laughs> and and you, how do you use this? Uh, Here is the question: Is this a time also important to take a break for rethink how to get on? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, it's it's really good. Uh, I really like it to be alone in my studio to walk around and to think about how it can go on to uh, paint alone. And um, I think it will definitely bring something to my uh, work and uh, how I will go on. So, and I did a strange thing. I started Instagram yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really hope that you don't get as addicted as I am. <laughs> and and be, follow Ansem. He needs some followers. He's concerned that he won't have enough followers, <laughs> which I, I said doesn't really do it. And I have a lot of students to do it, but uh, <laughs> I saw if I'm in your gallery, I have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, everybody here, before before we're gonna cut off, yes, you can watch this on YouTube. Um, I guess I mean now you can watch it 24 hours on Instagram, but you also can watch it on on YouTube. We created this platform on our website where we have all these 10 a.m. series. Please share it so people can also join and see it. And um, yeah. This is the collaboration with Franz. I just showed it in the end. So it was a thing we did together. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point because this is how we started and yeah. um, how we end. And I, we have to continue this. I really would like you, you to, to give a tour through the show in Tokyo again because um, um, it's, it would be so much better you, you show than then um, I can never get these questions off. Then, um, then I did what, what I did with Tatsuya is, is nearly not far enough from as good as what you could do. Yeah, so I would like to do it. Cool, let's do it. So then we, we, we already see each other very soon. Uh, Anzem, thank you so much. Say hi to Tanya and the kids and stay healthy. Okay. Uh, wash your okay. hands and stuff. Sunday, bye bye. Bye, bye bye. Thank you so much. This was an intense, uh, great visit, and I'm really happy of starting doing this. And next week, I'm going to visit Katharina Grossen, talk with her about the upcoming exhibition at Hamburger Bahnhof, and uh, so much other great things. We're going to talk to various small fires, a great gallery in uh, Seoul and Los Angeles. We're going to talk to um, collectors um, from India, 
Um, we're going to talk to, uh, I don't know, we're going to have open, open cards for artists to, to discuss the work with me and the audience. And then we're going to have a Q&A where you can ask me anything. Um, and uh, yeah, we try to be connected. 